Welcome back to Closing Bell. NASDAQ on track to finish at the lows of the week. Now down 1.5%. There you go. Today, uh, pretty ugly day, down more than 200 points. My next guest, though, remains bullish on the sector, says the tech trade has more room to run. Let's bring in Dominic Rizzo of T. Rowe Price. Welcome back. Good to see you. Hey, Scott. Good to see you. I'm looking at your holdings. I want to hit this first. Taiwan Semi, Adobe, ASML. Uh, I just talked to you know some folks who were on the show about the blow up today and some of these chip names and then Adobe after its earnings. Uh, what concerns do you have? You know, Scott, we still feel really good about these names over the next 18 to 24 months. We last time we were here, we talked about seeing a little bull market consolidation in tech. And that's what I think we're seeing. You know, but if we look at the fundamentals, I think PCs have bottomed. I think smartphones have bottomed. I think e-commerce has bottomed. I think data center spending has bottomed. And the valuations are relatively reasonable across the space. The global technology index is trading at roughly 22 to 23 times earnings. Historically, that peaks at 27 to 28 times earnings. So, yeah, we're in a little bull market consolidation here. But over the medium to long term, we still really like these names. Sure. But, I mean, 18 to 24 months is a, you know, a fairly long time frame. Um, from here. I mean, what what further pullback or consolidation, to use your word, uh, do you think we could still be in for? Well, you know, I, I, I actually think that we're probably coming closer to a bottom here for most of these names. Again, look at the fundamentals. They're really strong. Look at that Adobe earnings report. I, I think that what happened there is the stock re-rated. It was roughly 20 times the street's earnings. Now it's at 30 times. It was a well, well-owned long heading into the print. But if you look into next year, we have Firefly pricing coming through nicely. We have generative AI expanding the customer base. We feel good about a potential revenue acceleration there, and we think that they have a really nice room to run. Sure, but how do you, how do you counter the argument that some would make that say, you know, I, I agree the, the fundamentals of many of these companies are good, but they still don't match the valuations because they got so incredibly stretched that they need to come back down to earth even further. How do you, how do you respond to that? No, I actually think the valuations look okay. Look at NVIDIA, right? So NVIDIA is trading at just 26 to 27 times the street's fiscal two earnings right now, and they are clearly the best position for AI. I, the AI chip TAM is going from $30 billion in 2023 to $150 billion by 2027. That's a 50% CAGR. And between their CPUs, their GPUs, their DPUs, their software, that company is going to capture such incredible value over the next three years. So, yeah, we have a little bull market consolidation here that happens from time to time, especially when the stocks are up a lot. But if we look out over the medium to long term, which we're always trying to optimize in our strategy, 18 to 24 months, we feel still, still pretty good. Is Apple going through bull market consolidation or something more as we question the growth rates of not only the overall business, but of the bread and butter iPhone? I don't know. I feel pretty good about the iPhone, actually. This is the third year since a nice refresh cycle on the iPhone. The company still continues to take share in emerging markets. We still feel really good about India. Services continue to grow as a total percentage of the overall revenue. And the stock's trading at 20 to 6 to 27 times the street's earnings. I think Apple's going to be just fine. Is there anything you don't feel pretty good about? Because everything I've asked you about, you say you feel pretty good, whether it's a come down in valuations, fundamental questions about orders placed for certain kinds of businesses. There's got to be something on your mind that's a, a worry point. Of course, I'm, if you look at some of the very expensive software stocks, you always have to be very careful. But in general, the names that we own, the durable growth assets with reasonable valuations with improving fundamentals, we feel pretty good about them, like you said.